You have no doubt heard the hype about the Insta360 X series of cameras and most recently the newly released X4. Many YouTubers went overboard about this one, calling it perfect, insane, saying it'll blow your mind or words to that effect. They went and made the greatest 360 camera that's ever been made. Now they said this on sponsored videos which put their opinions in question. Was the X4 really as great as they claimed? Well, stay tuned. I have been working with Insta360 cameras for several years and I am truly knocked out by some of the wild effects that you can produce. And I finally did get my hands on the X4, which is in this case. And I can tell you flat out that it's a better camera than the X3 with higher resolution. Very few other details in the new camera but the higher resolution. But what people usually don't tell you is how much work you're going to have to put in with the Insta360 cameras to get your great shots. Unlike a GoPro, an iPhone, or any camera, what you see on the screen afterwards and what becomes the final product are two different things. You need to spend a lot of time with software to produce the images. Now, before I move on, know that I have no sponsorship arrangement with Insta360, although the company did send me this camera for review, and company officials do take my calls to answer questions. Thank you very much. So the Insta360 concept produces awesome, wild shots that you couldn't get otherwise. It has two lenses, one here, one here, and it photographs everything it sees frontwards and backwards. I've used it to get a shot of me dangling from a San Francisco cable car, and it got that shot as well as what the cable car saw in front of me at the same time. I get shots of me walking down the street or driving down the road simply by holding the camera on a selfie stick above me or out the car as I walk and drive. That selfie stick is invisible. Quote unquote. The software geniuses at Insta360 have designed a way to magically erase the stick from every shot. For my hot air balloon ride in Temecula, California, 2,500 feet in the air, I was holding the camera out of the balloon, the balloon basket, as I took the shot on the selfie stick, which you cannot see. I couldn't have gotten this shot with any other brand of camera, save a drone, had I been flying it at the same time to capture us in the hot air balloon basket, and that ain't an easy thing to do. As for the software, you can use the free Insta360 Studio on desktop or the mobile phone app to do your edits. If you go mobile, like on the GoPro, you can connect your phone and app and import footage wirelessly from the camera. I prefer working with the desktop app and seeing the images on a larger screen. The mobile app, however, offers a lot of guidance and tips for how to do crazy things that you've probably never even considered under what's called the Shot Lab. How to clone yourself into multiple Jeffs or Judys or Mikes or whatever. How to swap skies and more. Check out my how-to video right here on the channel. Now I want to show you the software. Let's look at the process of turning 360 footage on the balloon into something usable. So this is the Insta360 Studio. As you can see, when we first opened it up, the balloon wasn't even in the shot and we had to sort of like twirl it around a little bit to, to get it to fit. And from there, we're gonna do keyframes to try to make it a little wider, which is something that we need to do so that we can actually see the complete shot because what we wanna see is the complete balloon but that may not happen because of our aspect ratio. This is unusual. Uh, most, most shots are not so long, so vertically long, that they're actually really made for Instagram. Uh, you can see I'm twirling it around. I've got the, the tiny planet view. All sorts of different fun things that you can do um, because again, it's not a finished shot. You're starting with something and, and building into something. Here is a shot of us. Uh, I'm holding the selfie stick at this point, but I want to see the balloon, not just part of it. So I changed the aspect ratio to 916, which is the typical vertical video aspect ratio. And there it is. Now it all fits. It's not going to fit in a horizontal frame. Uh, and again, this is unusual with because it's the balloon. Uh, and this is what it looks like horizontally. Uh, if it's going to be a traditional YouTube in this format, um, I'm going to have to go vertical, but you get the idea. 
and you can see that you have a lot of options in the software. Okay, I have only had the X4 for a little while, but overall I can say that the reviews are kind of overhyped. This is a fun little camera for special things like balloon flights and cable car rides. Most of the time, the footage is extremely warped, twisting around, and you'll spend a lot of time in post trying to fix it. The footage is indeed higher resolution than on the previous model. It's advertised as 8K, but since there are the two cameras on both sides, you're looking at 4K on each side before you crop. And once you crop, and you will, my best guess is 2K to 1080p at best. And even then, let's be frank, while the footage itself, the scenery is awesome, it just is not that sharp as other cameras. I was really impressed with the audio. I am holding this baby 10 feet out from the balloon in the wind, and it still picked up our conversation. He's going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> He's fishing for photos. Yes. <laughs> Which was absolutely amazing. On the downside though, these lenses scratch really easy. My old X3 is so scratched I can barely use it and you can see the lines in the video. So if you buy one, be careful and make sure to get one of these lens protectors and put it over at all times. Pricing, the X4 is 500 bucks and you will need a selfie stick with it. The cheapo model is 25 bucks. The 10 foot model is $100. The previous X, three is four hundred dollars so my bottom line yes you can shoot it and frame it later but you will spend a lot of time perfecting the shot don't forget about that the resolution is better on the new camera but not as great as you're going to get on your gopro or your phone the camera's not as versatile as a gopro because even though they do all the action camera sort of advertising skiing bike riding things like that um the camera is so susceptible to scratches, which the GoPro is not. But that said, in special cases, again, you're gonna get awesome shots like I've been telling you all about. I love Insta360 cameras. I can't imagine doing a travel video without one, but I will only use the footage sparingly and I'll put more work into it and in getting it into the project than with any other camera. I'm Jefferson Graham. What are your thoughts about Insta360? Let me hear from you in the comments and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.